in this video I'm hopefully going to be showing you and explaining how to create a Japanese and English switch and 50Hz slash 60Hz switch for your Sega Mega Drive 1. This comes very handy when you're playing, want to play Japanese games on your Mega Drive and for instance put Sonic in your Mega Drive and switch it to 60Hz so you can actually witness the full speed of what the game should be played at and the sound increases you get better response times from your control pad and stuff like that so hope this tutorial helps and subscribe if you like my videos and let's get down to the tutorial what you're going to need to do is make the cartridge slot a bit wider as you can see I've just dremeled it out a little bit so a Japanese game will fit in right the, the doors don't fit perfect but I keep mine stored away so there's not going to be really any dust getting in um, if anybody could think of a way to remake the doors for it e.g. I don't know uh, vacuum form some plastic over them then go for it but basically what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get some of these I bought 8 off ebay for £2 and it is just search slide switch on ebay and then it will come up with these with these are double pole double throw DPDT slide switches and it was like four for a pound so I just bought eight just in case um, so yeah you're only going to be using one side of the switch contacts because you don't need to use all six you only need to use three basically it goes one way or the other there's no middle position and you need two of them um, you're also going to need some wire I got some from eBay also I got some blue black and red wire and that's five meters each one I don't know what AWG is, what thickness, all I know is it's seven stranded equipment wire and it works fine so they were a pound each so yeah. Um, first off you need to take your Mega Drive apart and make sure you disconnect the LED light. Um, basically you're going to need to take everything out because um, you're going to need to drill some holes here to put the switches in the side of the Mega Drive so you can just simply flick on the side so you're not going to be able to leave the motherboard inside the console so yeah you're going to take the whole lot out then what I did to mark where I'm going to put the switches is I just put the switches on the side and see how it all measured up found a good position and a good position is on this side the left hand side relative to the front um, you can't see it very well but I've marked it out with some sellotape and I'm just going to dremel out the holes there's the first hole for the switch I'm going to dremel that out and then I'm going to dremel this bit out and then I'm going to put the switches inside and mount them using super glue um, yeah and then I'm just going to put some insulation tape over the contacts so nothing can short out um, I'm not going to go show you how to do that because it's pretty much straightforward and I'm sure you can find a way to do it yourself. If you see here, we've got 8 jumpers and JP1 through to 4. What we're going to need to do is, on the Europe version of the Mega Drive, if we have a look, those two middle contacts, when it focuses, have a bridge across them. And that's for Europe consoles only. It's different if it's a US one. But basically we're going to need to cut them two bridges between the two middle sets of contacts. And yeah, then we need to start soldering wires on. So these two middle bridges we need to cut so they're no longer connecting. And basically if you live in Europe you're going to need six strands of wire. Um, preferably different colours so three sets of two sets of three lots of different colours and basically there's two contacts that we're not even going to be touching so yeah basically cut those in the middle until you can see a break in the copper and then let's go to the next step ok once you've measured up and drilled your holes you should have something that looks like this just two holes in the side of the case if that was the front of the Mega Drive it would be on the left hand side and now you want to mount your switches inside so obviously the switch points outwards so you can just you know flip between 50 and 60 hertz and Japanese and English I'm going to be using this stuff you could use a hot glue gun that's probably better but this stuff is super strong so I'm going to be using this 
Okay, I've just stuck them on and I'm actually really surprised at the strength of this stuff. Basically, it's two contact thing. You spray this on one side of whatever you're sticking to and you put some of that on the other uh, surface. And basically, it's stuck metal to plastic like it's welded, man. This stuff is strong and as you can see, two switches. Perfect, and that's dried in literally five seconds. That stuff's really strong, I definitely recommend it. It's that stuff. Oh, let's see what it says on the other bottle. But you don't want to get it on your fingers, trust me. So yeah. Um also if nobody if anybody watching this really doesn't want to attempt all this on their own and start soldering stuff to the motherboard and stuff, just send me an email to Jawsville at hotmail com or send me a message on YouTube and we could arrange something. If you live in the local area or whatever, I could probably do it at a small price for you. But yeah, next let's move on to uh, disconnecting the bridges and you know soldering the wires to the motherboard. Okay, basically you're not really going to be able to see this very well, but I took a, just a simple flat-headed screwdriver as you can see here, and these middle two jumpers you got to scratch the bridge away from them in the center. There we go, that's a nice shot. As you can see, I've just scratched away at the middle until you hear like the scratching sound 